Uh, welcome back to the Canadian Gun Vault Behind the Vault Door. My name is Mark Morelli. I'll be your podcast host uh, for this uh, evening's episode. I'm uh, flying solo tonight, and uh, certainly it's been a busy week. Always is here at the Canadian Gun Vault, uh, flying around from place to place, uh, doing what we can to uh, improve things within the firearm community. Loved uh, getting up to uh, spend a little time at Urban Tactical. I was really enjoying that place. Uh, you know, it, it's a terrific environment. I look at the uh, selection of guns they have there. Uh, I mean, if you're there to buy anything related to emergency services, uh, chances are you'll find it there. And they've got like just this incredible staff that just always smiles. I really do enjoy going and spending some time there. And uh, to make matters worse, <laughs> Or better, depending on your viewpoint, they have a range built into the back. And I really, really do think that they're running a uh, class act there. It's been, uh, it's been a, you know, a number of exposures. I've spent uh, you know, quite a bit of time there now, and I really do enjoy spending uh, you know, some time at that location in Brantford. It's a little bit off the beaten path, and don't be afraid of, you know, of that. Uh, they're worth the trip. Uh, to go there, to actually get smiled at, uh, you know, to have people really looking forward to showing people uh, others a good time is really fun to watch. And uh, it, you know, I've been up there now uh, probably uh, you know, three or four times in the last couple of months and have not seen a lot of unhappy people leaving, never seen anybody arguing at the counter, or any kind of uh, debate going on at this location. And, uh, you know, looking at their selection, looking at their range packages. Uh, I really do think that they supply people with a pretty good time there. So I'm uh, really enjoying um, you know, my time spent there. I'm uh, planning on running. Uh, for those of you to get this in time, uh, we're going to be running that uh, contest for that little Beretta 75. Uh, for the people out there that don't know what a uh, Beretta Model 75 looks like, I mean, it's like this little James Bond gun. And it's chambered in 22. Excuse me, I had to take a drink there. No, it's non-alcoholic. Uh, for those of you just tuning in, uh, I, you know, I always like to take a sip of water at some point throughout the course of these uh, you know, rants. I've heard them called rants. I really actually, uh, you know, I love the idea of having my own personal space on the internet from rants. I mean, if this is the place to do it. I mean, people, sometimes people are subjected to it out in public and... You know, they don't want to listen. They don't have a choice. Uh, you know, I'm pretty vocal about the firearm community. I love the idea of continuing to promote uh, the firearm community in, in such a way that, you know, sometimes I get a little enthusiastic, you know. And, you know, I try and never get down on, on anybody. But, you know, uh, when people say, ah, oh, you know, this Trudeau government, I mean, I, we really haven't seen any major attacks yet. But, you know, I can't help but feel something's still coming. I promised Dave, my partner and dear friend, that I would, uh, you know, kind of steer off the subjects of, you know, possible bans, prohibitions and or upcoming changes in law that could have a negative impact on the firearm community. But it just it permeates, uh, you know, every fiber of my being uh, to think that this government of all governments, uh, amongst all the other bad decisions I think they're making, uh, <laughs> wouldn't take a stab at gun owners. I mean, the fact that they've waited this long says, I don't know, they're saving the best for last. I don't know. Uh, but I always feel that something's coming. And, uh, you know, what else we got on? You know, so this contest, yeah, return to the contest. So, uh, the idea that, you know, we could run a bullseye style contest called uh, Racing for Slips uh, and, and run that is really an exciting prospect for me. I love the idea of going to Urban Tactical. And, uh, you know, of course, people will only be required to pay for the, uh, you know, the range fee. And I would ask that everybody come with a uh, one box of 22 uh, long rifle type ammunition, and and you know I'll I'll give you guys a, you know a warm up round or two, you know a mag or two uh, from that gun. It's a tiny little Beretta. It actually is you know it it clusters quite nicely uh, for a gun that was probably built sometime in the 70s. But it looks like a little miniature Beretta 92 FS. Uh, with this like really long barrel, but it's really slim, and it, you know it's a single action, uh, you know type firearm, and you know it it does really do a great impression of like a James Bond type gun. It looks it looks like that, uh, but it's a target pistol, and you know this one was gifted to us, and uh, we were told to use it as we saw fit, and of course now uh, we're gonna take this uh, firearm and we're gonna 
use it in bullseye style competitions to see who wins it. And if somebody can outshoot me, uh, you know, on the firing line, and uh, I, the day I think I picked was uh, actually this Sunday, which is like the 31st. And for those of you out there that think it's a bad idea to do it, uh, the night of Christmas, or rather New Year's Eve, I, I would say that we'll do it early enough in the day that you'll still have time to make all your plans. Uh, for those of you out there that have to explain to their wives why they're maybe leaving the house at, you know, 1030 on a Sunday morning, uh, you know, hey, there's a good reason for it. Uh, you're going to get a chance uh, to meet uh, me, of course, and the good people there at Urban Tactical. And we're going to ask that people come, you know, perhaps uh, for noon hour uh, and be there. And that way there should be enough time that we can run several matches. And I love the idea of people showing up and just paying their range rental fees and getting a box of ammo. And I mean, with the allowance of a few warm up magazines, uh, you know, the balance of the box of ammo will be left with the CGV. And we will use that to uh, put forward to the new shooters that we come across uh, as we instruct them with some of the smaller pistols. Uh, in, in 22 caliber and rifles uh, to get them, you know, better acquainted uh, with the amazing world of firearms. And so we thought, you know what, uh, ammo is starting to get a little bit expensive. We love the idea of, you know, always introducing new people to the sport every week, uh, wherever we go, we try and leave a good impression with people. But uh, the idea that, you know, perhaps the burden of uh, paying for the ammunition shouldn't be left completely to us. We love the idea of people donating that box of ammo to the cause. I promise I'll put it to good use. And so we're going to run this bullseye style competition. And uh, if anybody should manage to outshoot me, uh, you'll of course have to be a valid RPL holder if you are to uh, win the prize and be able to collect it. But if you can outshoot me at this competition, and I know Tango Mike 72, I know you're out there listening and uh, you think you can take this thing from me. If you think you're man enough to take it from me, Mikey, you come try. I'm uh, really excited about the idea of going head to head with uh, Tango Mike. He's a pretty focused cat. Uh, even if you don't want to shoot in the competition, I think it would be, <laughs> it would be really cool to see Mike and I shooting. Uh, I haven't been keeping up with Mike's accuracy game, uh, but I do know that the man does not flinch when he's holding uh, that shotgun pistol. And uh, we ran that competition, uh, if you want to call it that. It was more like a, an exercise in self-abuse. Uh, for those of you out there that missed our uh, second installment to the uh, Rossi shotgun pistol video series uh tango mike and i shot this thing uh, until until we ran out of ammo uh and and finally uh thank god you know the the gong collapsed and we were out of shells because i don't think my hand could take any more of it I, it took five days to get the feeling back in my hand uh, i fired a magnum pistol now weeks later and i can refuel you know it's it's it feels like a reoccurring injury like wow uh, i will never do that again fire that shotgun pistol with those shells in it that many times. Tango Mike, I don't know if you feel the same way. Uh, you're not a quitter. You're a supreme competitor. I'm looking forward to seeing you on Sunday, Mike, uh, along with anybody else that might want to take in that spectacle because uh, I imagine that's going to be a hell of a contest. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little nervous uh, that Mike may come a little closer than uh, comfortable for my taste on the uh, on the score sheet. So if you want to come out uh, again on Sunday, the 31st uh, of December, uh, we're going to be running it uh, around noon hour. So if you want to get there a little bit early and uh, it's going to be a little bit of a meet and greet. I love the idea if, uh, you know, if people show up and they want to talk to me. If not too many people show up, it'll just be great to kind of get together with members of the community. And uh, perhaps exchange some ideas. Uh, I'm always looking forward to meeting you guys. I might have some gear there with me if you want some. If you've been, you know, perhaps wanting, uh, you know, one of our... Uh, items for sale in our merchandise division uh you know maybe i'll have some of that stuff with us we we love when you guys support us it's uh, it's really great to see the gear out there i love that you guys are wearing it uh you know for me it's very exciting oh it's time for another drink well i i've been accused of rambling i want to come back to that because you know you know, uh, no one's ever had anything bad to say about what it is that I talk about, but I have been accused of rambling. And I love, I love the fact that, again, you know, I've created this little space in the internet where I can ramble safely. You know, uh, I love the idea of you guys continuing to want to listen. And we're going to continue putting these things out there. And we love your input. Uh, certainly tell everybody you know. Uh, get this around to the different forums. Uh, the Canadian Gun Vault is 100% uh, Canadian. And pulling hard for the uh, Canadian firearm community. I love the idea 
of continuing to pursue uh, the right to change some of these god-awful rules that we live under currently. Uh, the idea that uh, an entire community of people would sit there and say, well, none of that makes any sense, but pff, we'll do it anyway. I, I think I think the, uh, the concept of maybe eradicating that kind of blind uh, faith in the system is something that you know we can promote here. Uh, if there's a bunch of laws that don't make any sense and they really don't, uh, you know, have any impact on public safety, I don't know why we couldn't eradicate those items from the book. Uh, you know, we're a civilized nation. We're an intelligent group of people, uh, hopefully, uh, and we can come up with some reasonable solutions to uh, crime involving uh, firearms. I mean, I still haven't heard much about this advisory committee or what they're doing. Uh, I don't know if there's anything, you know, concrete coming down the pike yet. People keep asking me, you know, like, well, you know, I, you know, I hear different things from uh, what I consider to be ordinarily very credible sources. Uh, you know, you hear the usual tinfoil hat theories uh, for the people out there uh, in, in the world of listeners. Uh, just tuning us, tuning into us now. Uh, we have this thing in the firearm community called the tinfoil hats. You know, like the guys that are like constantly conspiracy theorizing. Uh, those people are always, you know, on the lookout for anything that looks suspect and are willing to point that out. Uh, certainly, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to dedicate an entire podcast actually to uh, tinfoil hat theories, which are uh, a lot of fun in some respects. They do get they do get ridiculed quite often. Uh, every now and then, I figure one of them's got to be right. We're all sitting there going, ha ha ha! That there's no way that ca- that could ever happen. Meanwhile, it probably has uh, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, always uh, some you know ridiculousness is perpetrated by the government uh, at some point in history. If you look back, I mean, th- there's all kinds of you know. Uh, debacles and certainly you know in my time in policing uh, you know my 20 years of service I saw a lot of things that made very little sense uh, even to the guys that were enforcing the rules but that didn't stop people from you know leaving them on the books uh, sometimes up for an unnecessary uh, amount of time so I think this is the point where perhaps we should start to lobby instead of you know being on the defensive all the time we should start to lobby hard for some real change Uh, how about we relax the rules a little bit as they relate to this is wasted money over here if my tax dollars are going to get spent, uh, you know, intending to have an impact on public safety that is positive and is definitely cost effective, you know, I'm willing to do this. I think that we should start to look at things like that. Uh, let's let's divert uh, funds, monies and you know, resources away from areas that really have no impact on public safety. And let's start to filter them over to, uh, you know, places where they, they could have a better impact. And certainly the desired effect, which is a reduction of violent crime involving firearms. I don't know what's so difficult to see about it. I can't break it down to any simpler terms. The guy who uh, decides that he wants to own a firearm and operate a firearm, whether he wants to hunt, uh, gun collect, Uh, Long range shoot, uh, you know, uh, skeet and trap and sporting clay, you know, (laughs) informal hand pistol, target shooting, bullseye, metallic silhouette, you name it, three gun, right? Hey, I just like blasting. I like that, that sound, you know, Um, like there's something for everybody in the firearm community. You know, if you want to focus and you want to breathe and you want to hit absolute, you know, target match perfection. You know, you go over to the bullseye range and, you know, you get yourself to a quiet club, you know, like uh, Galt. Uh, you want to do metallic silhouette? Again, the Galt Sportsman Club. Uh, Pete Durant runs this fantastic metallic silhouette competition that I love, you know, participating in. And, you know, you're, sh- you're shooting at these little, you know, steel chickens, pigs, rams, you know, uh, turkeys uh, of various sizes in, you know, groups of 10. And it's like, it's like a carnival for adults. Like, I mean, there's just three gun competitions. I, I really haven't gotten too close to those guys yet. I'm, I'm looking forward to following, you know, the Ipsic style TDSA, uh, you know, handgun pistol style competitions. I guess three guns would be, you know, pretty much the natural evolution of that. People want to shoot different types of firearms, uh, you know, and, and, and again, very exciting timed and scored events. Uh, Really looking forward to following, you know, uh, some great uh, figures in the firearm community, some uh, really talented up-and-comers. Two-Eyed Practical. Uh, Keep your eye on him, folks. I'm really excited about uh, providing you guys with some real 
uh, exciting footage of this man in action. Like I, I, I like watching this guy move uh, on, on like a camcorder camera or a camera phone style camera, uh, <clears throat> you know, that's not done well. Uh, I can't wait to get him from some different angles. Like, he he really does move quickly. It's going to be fun to watch. Actually, your best bet is to watch him actually from a distance. Uh, and you get a better appreciation for how this kid uh, can stride. Like, he's got these big, long legs, and he just, like, flies out. Uh, you can see the scorekeepers struggling and the uh, you know, the refs struggling to keep up with his, his pace. Uh, I do believe I, I've heard rumors uh, that he's been told to slow down a little bit because people can't keep up. I mean, hey, if it's a timed event and you're, you know, you're competing, uh, some people can hustle. So I guess you're going to have to find refs to keep up. Uh, looking forward to bringing you guys that. Uh, we've got a lot of great things coming. Uh, racing for slips coming up this weekend. Uh, you know, we have had some terrific talks uh, with some terrific and exciting uh, new projects in mind with some members of the firearm community. Really looking forward to dropping on you guys uh, some fantastic uh, facts and some uh, really uh, amazing things that are coming up. Uh, for you guys out there that uh, think that we've just been taking pictures of guns uh, and, and providing you with some nightly entertainment, we've got quite a bit more coming. So uh, keep an eye on the... Uh, Keep an eye on the YouTube, the Instagram, uh, the uh, Facebook, uh, and you're going to see some uh, great things coming up. We're uh, really looking forward to bringing them to you and to having everybody uh, enjoy uh, what it is that the Canadian farm community has to offer. Uh, we're going to give you all one place to come to and enjoy it all together. And that's the idea, folks. Looking forward to some community unity. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, evening's podcast. We're coming in at about the 20-minute uh, mark. And sorry, Canadian Limey, couldn't stretch it any longer than that, but uh, I definitely got to get myself some rest. I got a long day tomorrow. Anyway, Canada, as always, shoot straight, stay safe. <laughs>